Hello guys, how are you? Today on this video let's take apart the Alpha 166 engine, the V6 Turbo. Right here I'm already preparing my work, uh, my workspace and uh, taking out the wiring loom for the starter and the alternator. Uh, here on this cable I'm seeing here something is wrong with that cable. The point of the cable is crooked. I don't know if, if it is really like that or someone force it in place. I have to check that out and keeping there the nuts in place so I don't have to look for them in the future. I know the placement of them but I don't want to keep looking and looking all day long. Again here taking out the wiring for the alternator. Very straightforward to do that. The power one comes from, from the battery and the signal one that gives you the signal to the to your dashboard if you don't have charge on the alternator. Here the reverse switch plug and here the clips to hold down the wiring loom that eventually goes to the oil sensor or oil, oil switch and for the starter and alternator. Already did a video about the oil switch, if you want to check that out, it's down there on the description. Very easy to understand the workings of it. And here on the starter, I start to see a very big problem. It has to do with corrosion. These three bolts are very, were very difficult to remove, mainly the bottom one. The top one was the easiest. The center one, uh, the color is all messed up. I don't really don't know what happened there. Maybe it's not from there at all. And the bottom one, well, it was about five minutes dealing with just that bolt. It was really a uh, job and a half. This this uh, six millimeter socket is really good. Uh, the one that I have is a better one. In the time that that better meant quality, and. Um, the bolt is, uh, is garbage. Someone did try to take that out or put it, put it in and the bolt is really messed up. So I do, do the trick that I did on my Alpha 155 and just hammer a bit. Just a nudge there with my hand and uh, here you go. I will deal with this later, just putting a new screw in, not a big deal. And now taking out this alternator. Curious that this alternator really re reminds me of those uh, Audi A4 ones. Two 13mm uh, head bolts, very long bolts. And uh, just uh, slide it out like this. To put it in, I'll give you a tip or two to be easier to do that. Preparing here the gearbox to come out with my really old and uh, bad impact gun. It's really getting old. Did not take out the bolt with the gun, so I have to do it by hand. In this rear one, I don't have space for the impact one. Even if I did, check this out. One click and now it starts to bind. So I try it again, nope, and uh, again, no, starting to come out of the screw. So I try an old method, it's really risky, but uh, it gives me more freedom of movement. And eventually, one, two, three, four. Uh, and this goes on for a bit. Almost 90% of the bolt was like this. And I was dancing here with the bolt left and right, left and right, left and right to keep the threading uh, in one piece. And eventually, two threads before the screw ended, I could take out the bolt by hand. But this pretty much dictated all the condition of all the screws of this gearbox. What I learned after that is that all of the threading on the engine and on the gearbox on the side that has threading, it's all messed up. Someone really did messed up on this one. 
Man, I just... Jesus. So now lower closer to the ground. I will take out the rest of the bolts. Some of them are really, really, really tight. On this car is just like this, like I told you on the other video. Some bolts really, really tight, another ones really loose, and some of them really not existent. So the final bolt is that uh, that one. And on these gearboxes, normally the box comes out like this, but on this one, in some of them, uh, you have to take out the slave cylinder or, or the lever on there, on top, to take it out. But that is not the moment. This mom at this moment what happens is the dowels that guide the gearbox are frozen solid with the gearbox, with corrosion. As, I, as you can see now it al already moves and now I have the problem with the lever. So the lever is practically welded, <laughs> so not good. So I did try two methods, no, okay. I will take out then the, the support for the slave cylinder as I, am, have, as I have to replace the slave cylinder. I'll just do that in the GFE. And I can see that two of the bolts are from stainless. That's not right. And the, uh, once again, the threading is all crook and all messed up. One more thing to deal with. Again, the F-16 is always making noise. So as you can see, the gearbox is out, and now I have. Oh, it's very. It is very stiff that the movement of the fork over there. In here, they did uh, messed up also these screws. They used uh, a wrench that is not for this application. So I have to hammer all of them in place. So I don't have any surprises. And this clutch kit is, I think, new, but it has a lot of corrosion. But the corrosion, I think I can manage that with uh, sandpaper. And that, that center uh, bearing being new, I will reuse it. And for that, I have a video for that. That video was not very well understood because people thought I was using old stuff. No, in this case, it is all new, so I will reuse a new part. And again, my impact gun is not powerful nearly enough to take out this. And uh, just then it died. Okay, done. So I have a tip for you. If you don't have an impact gun, you can use two of the screws uh, of the gearbox. So it died again. Maybe with the compressor fully charged, it uh, comes back to life. Okay, so you have your tool over there on top of the flywheel and you can take out the screws like this so repeat this process how many times you need to repeat it and eventually you will have all of the, scr of the screws ready to go now my impact gun c came back to life but that one did not uh, came out and guess why very 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 tight so unequal tightening on these screws is very bad for the, the crankshaft and the flywheel. Be careful doing this, because if the engine is up on the air, you'll get a headache, a very big headache, if the flywheel comes out flying into your head. Guess why, how I know that. <laughs> Getting really frustrated because it was really windy today and really cold. And I wanted to remove this donor engine from the engine stand, put it on the ground. That is not a problem to be on the ground right now because it is not uh, ready for use, not even close. And I just don't want to deal with that mess right now. I just want to use that engine stand for the V6. Coming up, and now instead of putting the engine stand on the crane, I did, did the, the other way around, so my head was not in the right place right there, but okay, at least you can laugh at me. I have no worries with that. And now here, putting the engine stand on the stand. That was a smart move, I think.
and now to the ground. In this way I have much more freedom of work and I put myself on the little corner not to have so much cold and wind on the camera. So this is the pipes for the oil cooler, the engine oil cooler. Very difficult to do with the engine in place. Uh, but that's not impossible and right here it's just uh, in the jiffy it's okay securing those banjo bolts and taking out the support for the alternator i believe yeah. the support is from steel strange now here on this support that houses the oil filter and the transmission uh, axle it also makes the transition to the oil pipes for the oil cooler behind that you have a o-ring or some sort of o-rings because you have various um, very tight indeed you have various types of assemblies for the alpha 164 gtv6 and the 166 it's different over the years, okay? <laughs> it, but always a some kind of O-ring. And on this case, they put the O-ring, but it, they also put mm, RTV in the lot of it. So we have, uh, guess what? Glue inside the oil channels. So this engine was destined to die one way or, the, or another. And we will see the state of the oil pan when I reach that. So the, take out the washers over there, the glue is holding all that stuff in and eventually it comes almost out but now I have to take out this uh, support and now really out. And to my surprise, a lot of RTV. In the O-ring that is universal, you can buy this in the, a lot of places. Now this main central pipe that goes to the water pump, just take it out. the 5 millimeter and another nut to add to the collection here on the turbo this turbo is liquid liquid cooled most of the old turbos are nowadays is uh, rare to encounter but they are still uh, present on some cars normally high horsepower cars and I'm really thinking, taking all a part of the turbo because I believe this turbo is not good. Well, this turbo was serviced, but uh, with my eagle eye, I saw that the intake turbine is crooked. You have parallel fins on the, the turbine, and the inner ones are a little bit, not a little bit, are bent a lot. And I think this compressor is not sucking air, it's pushing out air. So I, I will ask the owner to revise this, uh, this turbo. I think he wants to increase the capacity of this turbo even. And now taking out the turbo from his um, support. I don't really have a special, very thin wrench for this. But uh, going old school with this uh, type of wrench, very strong and that with, with that angle, very easy to do force with it. It is very long too, this wrench. I really love this wrench. And uh, it was purchased like 20, 20 years ago or more. Now for this application I needed a 27 mm open end wrench. I don't have that. I have to buy more tools. I also have to buy more parts. The list goes on and on and on. The more we go, the more things I have to buy. But eventually I did get this done. In Portugal that wrench is called the English wrench. In in England it's called what? <laughs> National wrench? I don't know. On this application here for the turbo uh, don't forget we have four washers uh, in, on the old days this was very common but even now 
uh, it, it is still used on some assemblies, for example, on Iveco trucks. Mm, nice sound of bearing in the morning. These bearings are replaceable and these compressors are repairable if you have the correct parts. Here in Portugal we have a specialist on the Sundan compressors. It, it is also an importer for the parts, the official one. And uh, later on, the, on this year I want to do a series of videos for that, with that person. So this compressor, I will try to repair it, or the owner, or replace it. But don't, please, 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 don't buy that Chinese ones. For, on the inside, they are, are all full of holes and uh, very bad. Okay, so the support here is very much uh, stuck in there. And you may ask why I use such a big hammer on this uh, very fragile part. Because a big hammer does not leave so much marks and the impact is really greater. So as you can see, it's out. Now on the dipstick tube, it's just a 19, I, I believe, millimeter. And take it out. No seals, no nothing. And on the oil level, this is a switch, not a sensor. Nowadays it is a switch, but back then it was a sensor. Sorry, it was a, <laughs> it was a, a switch. To take out the oil pan, many of you will scream at me because I'm doing this with uh, impact gun. Remember one simple thing, I'm doing the disassemble of the screws. This will not harm the screws in any way. Okay, and I'm being careful of course. To do the assembly, I will not, not do that. And one bolt is missing, guess why? I don't know, because it, because it is a 7mm one, not a 6 or a 8. To take out the oil pan, do it like this. You will not damage at all the oil pan and only use a lever or a screwdriver once the sound of it is hollow, once the glue gave up. This oil pan is glued down. It does not have a gasket like the 75. Okay, and for my surprise, ta-da! What the hell? On a new engine! This is my, this is the, the confirmation of the problem with the pistons. Uh, here on the intake pipe for the, the oil, hair and glue, on there the seals are not present, just RTV and not full of it any, in any way. On the, on the support bearing, I have a few marks. On the new engine with zero kilometers or miles, this is not good. Okay, I believe it's not very good. Checking out the for uh, any other stuff. And I notice it is a standard measurement of uh, bearing, half bearing. So let's take out here the bearings for the, the corn rods to see if I can find anything strange, maybe. And at first glance, wow, new, awesome. But nope, the other half is already a bit scuffed up. And I think I know why. This engine being zero kilometers does not have any running time. And uh, as soon as they turn, turn on the engine being uh, the wrong timing, the, co the inner collision of the engine makes the um, half bearings or the bearings uh, create that um, scuffing marks. But here on number four, mm, that's different. That is not the same problem. What I believe happened here was the same problem on the pistons um, that you can see on the bottom of the oil pan. Dirt. I believe this is because of dirt. And here on the other half bearing, more evidence of uh, problems with lubrication. Dust, debris, hair, I don't know, something. And here to separate the assembly, I thought at first that the pistons were new, but I discovered they are not. They, they just clean the top of them. That is sneaky. And I can see that the piston rings are not new also. They are full of carbon on the inside. And I have this very strange color of oil that I now 
understand that is the problem with maybe the problem with contamination of the new oil contamination of dirt on the new oil so you have on the gal oil galleries you have uh, dirt and uh, oil and the new oil pushes out all of that stuff and it, it is the first thing to uh, lubricate the new piece the new assembly of the, of the engine so i think the problem of this engine was too um lack of um proper cleaning once the engine was being assembled on this liner i also can see various problems not only that rust on top but also very strange markings and uh, appears to be almost like uh, grooves the cross hatch is completely gone on all six cylinders on all six uh, liners again here I was trying to figure out the, the thing with the color of the oil but now doing the, doing the editing I was capable of uh, thinking of this theory even but that, that does not matter theory or not the liners has to have to be verified for roundness the pistons too this uh, piston rings will not go on the final assembly so it does not matter even the condition of them they are used they cannot be like this and i try to do an experiment here to see to see the gap on the piston ring and i start to see light <laughs> in between the the piston rings